you lit the first candle for? Faith. Faith, according to Charles Fillmore, is the perceiving power of the mind linked with the power to shape substance. Charles Fillmore has said more than, more than once, many times, if you have the idea, you have the thing. Faith is that part of you that can perceive the possibility of a thing. And as you invest your faith in it, accepting that it's, it's possible and it's ultimately yours, if you maintain that connection to it with faith, you continue to see it available to you and in your life, it's going to draw to you the things that are necessary to bring it about into physicality. Now, Charles also called faith part of the thinking faculty of your mind. And he's represented by the disciple Peter, the rock, remember? Upon this rock, Jesus said, I will build my church. I will build my spiritual consciousness upon this rock of faith. Now, thinking faculty, it, it, each one of us, it's a remarkable thing. Did you realize it's a time machine? In thought, it transcends time. It transcends space. Thought can take you to any place, any time. I could close my eyes and I could go to sleep, but I'd rather close my eyes and be sitting in, well, let's see. There, right across the street from the old opera in Paris is a lovely cafe. And I've sat at one of those outside tables, not this kind of weather, having cafe au lait watching people go by and just suck, sucking up, soaking up the beauty of, of Paris. I can go there now. You could go to one of your favorite places right now. You could go to your birth home. See, I tell you I can do it, and I tell you we can all do it. And automatically I'm doing it. And in my mind, I'm seeing and interacting with people who aren't here anymore. Because they're here. I could go to the future. What do you think your day is going to be like tomorrow? You can begin to envision it. Don't you sometimes the night before start to plan what you're going to do tomorrow? And in many ways, you might even visualize yourself doing it. The thinking nature is a wonderful thing. It can experience the past. It can create and experience the future. It can experience, you can experience through the thinking nature something that you've never experienced before. And then you can do something else like worry. What is worry? The expectation that something negative may happen, right? Oh. Got the idea? Just it's, imagine drawing the substance to bring about just what you're worrying about. 
When you worry about it, do you feel happy? No. Already it puts you in, the, in a, a frame of mind much like you would be if it were actually happening to you. Is, does, it, does it not? That's your perceiving power invested in the negative. There's a, a story of Peter, and I know you're, you're familiar with it. It's in the 14th chapter of Matthew. Uh, wrong color. I got too many ribbons. 14th chapter of Matthew. And let's look at it. Cheer, it is I. Be not afraid. Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. Come. Thou little faith. Wherefore didst thou doubt? Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Like the movie, right? Interesting story. Peter represents that thinking aspect of mind that is that faculty of faith, the ability to perceive that he can what? Follow Jesus, right? Didn't Jesus say, Follow me? Peter sees this and says, Oh, Lord, I'd like to do that. Well, here, let me show you where the rocks are. He steps out. It is much like all of us when we get a divine idea and we perceive some good and we start to hold on to it and say, I want to, I want to have this, I want to experience this. And we have faith in it for a while and it starts to look like it's happening. And then what happened to distract him? The storm, the thunder, the wind. In the Bible it says the wind. All of a sudden, his faith was diverted. Jesus said, ye have little faith. But it's not that it was little faith. All of a sudden, faith moved from invested in, I can do this, into, oh my God, I'm going to sink. Works very easy. He got just what he was perceiving, right? And <clears throat> that's what happens as we're beginning to learn how to use that faculty of faith. You may have taken some time ago a, a unity class or picked up a unity book prosperity on healing whatever and you found an idea and you began to put it to use in your life and it it's amazing may i call them first timers people who have never been around unity before and they come to their first class or they get their first book and it seems like 
they start to have miraculous results because they're open. They're searching, and they found, well, when, when I found unity, I thought, my goodness, these people think like I do, and this is just what I've been looking for. I was open to everything, wide open. Boy, I started doing seed money and prosperity bank and all kinds of things. And they worked for me. It was miraculous. I had to drive across town from my apartment to, to the university, the conservatory at Cincinnati. And parking was difficult around the university. There was a parking garage underneath the conservatory, and I could park in there, but so many times it was full. There were places out on the street for several blocks. Mostly they were filled, and I'd start when I got in my car across town. Thank you, Father for the right and perfect parking place. Sometimes I'd turn to St. Anthony. You know that one? St. Anthony, St. Anthony, turn around. Something's lost and must be found. A parking place. Hold it in mind that there was a parking place for me. And I'm going to tell you it's more times yes than no that I'd get there and one would be vacant or somebody was pulling out and and I just had to walk down the driveway into the conservatory. Uh, I'm going to tell you, I wasn't always that early for class that I could afford to drive all over campus hunting for a parking place. It's amazing how it would work. Then after a while, we get sloppy. We start to forget. Or we st something comes up in life, and we think, oh my God, it, there isn't enough, and it won't be here, and I can't get it in time. And we do just what Peter did. We start to sink. The water represents the challenges of daily life, the problems of life. As long as you're in the consciousness of Christ in you and the power of Christ guiding you, leading you, giving you the... The, the spiritual power to rise above anything. You walk on top. You don't get your feet wet. The moment you start go, going to that human thinking, remember, it said Peter was a fisherman. I said Charles suggested he, he represents an aspect of the thinking nature. Fish in the Bible are symbols for ideas. Isn't that representative of the thinking nature? It says he's a fisherman, and then there was this issue where they were out fishing and they hadn't caught anything. And Jesus came along and he said, cast your net on the right side. They had been casting it on the left. The right side would be spiritual awareness, spiritual consciousness, faith in yes, as opposed to the left side, no. Not enough. I can't catch anything. They're not biting today. There's no, my good is not coming. That's that faculty of faith invested either in the presence or the absence. We need to get clear in our understanding in this use of faith also. It is not that you are the faith thinker called Peter. Oh no. Peter is one of your 12 faculties. The faculty of faith. What are you? Who else is in the story of him walking on water? The other main character is 
Jesus, who represents the Spirit of Christ within you. That's what you are. So in the story, you're not Peter, you're Jesus. We just don't know it or realize it. Peter is one of the faculties that are used by Jesus. Now before you're aware that you're not, you're not merely a, a human being with this faculty of faith, but that you are this spirit of God that has all of these faculties to serve, to serve spiritual purposes, what did they say Jesus was by profession? Carpenter. There are those who disagree with that, but it serves my purpose. Carpenter works with physical tools, right? My, my great uncle was a master carpenter and had <laughs> they had a small farmhouse Behind the farmhouse was a very nice shed. Very nice. And <laughs> large. That was my uncle's workshop. Power, well, power tools. He had a, he had a, a, a large table uh, saw and, and hand braces, to hand drills the old kind, and chisels and all. Hundreds of gray painted tin cans with white lettering of what they were, what size nail, what size screw, what kind of screw. It was phenomenal. After he passed and uh, my great aunt was going to move into the city, they had an auction and uh, they were selling, the, the auctioneer was selling things out of the garage, out of the shed. And of course, people were buying ca these cans of, of nails and screws and other things. And some were opening them and finding green stuff in there. Money. Kind of amazing. <laughs> you just never know. Yeah. Before you realize this divinity within you and that the faculties are there to serve, to serve you. You're a carpenter. You're working out here, trying to make things happen out here, manipulating stuff out here, or people out here. Peter's a fisherman. It says he draws, Charles Fillmore said in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, he draws his thoughts from the unstable sea of sense. We start looking out here and trying to figure out what's, what's real and what's, what's possible. And then at some point you realize that you are mind and all things are originally generated within mind. You're not working with wood like a carpenter anymore. You're working with invisible substance and divine ideas. Well, those tools of the carpenter no longer work. They're no longer appropriate. So you leave that carpenter bench. And you can begin to proclaim the truth, speak the truth, affirm the truth, live it, in the world and the tools change one of them of course that you will use is Peter faculty of faith but you have 11 other others at candlelighting service we do an affirmation for each of the 12 disciples as they represent one of these divine faculties those 12 powers are your tools, not to work as a carpenter, but to work as a child of God. So now as we begin Advent, it's time to remember Peter 
and begin to direct, as Jesus did, Peter, the faculty of faith. It has the power to build, bind or to loose until you thoroughly identify with that divine nature, that Christ in you, you'll do what Peter did. Remember with Jesus? Uh, aren't you one of his disciples? Don't you know this man? Oh, who? Oh, I never saw him before in my life. Remember, he denied Jesus. How many times? Three times, yeah. And even fled. Well, that, that's when... We back off of what, what we perceive, what we want, what we desire. We give up. Or we get afraid. We need to take charge. You, remember, I've said before, <clears throat> there's no coercion in spirituality. You are created with free will. Emily Cady says it a little differently. She says, you are not an automaton. I, don't you like that word? I look for opportunities to say that. Automaton. You're not a robot so, or a puppet. Something isn't up there going, controlling you, making you think this thought, making you think this good, making you choose this path. No. You have free will. There's no coercion in spirituality. So you are the free will. You have within you the directive ego. Ego. I. And there's a Ego with a capital E, and there's the ego with little E. Little E, you don't want... Yeah, we got some of that too, but the, 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 the directive ego with a capital E is your divinity. That Jesus part of you, what we call Christ in you. The I am power. And each one of us now has this problem of life right here in front of us. Is it a problem? Some days it is. Some days it's a gas. Some days it's just really fun. You have the problem before you. Problem of life. What choices to make. Your choices are presented to you all the time. What will I say? What should I do? What's the truth about this situation? So often we go back to the carpenter tools and we look at what's going on outside and use one of those tools to decide what the appearance is. It's time to start with that faculty of faith. Within you is your church. And you were the high priest, like Melchizedek, who was without beginning of years or end of days. What does that mean? You are eternal. Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, are within you. The source and the substance. But you can't do what the Father has set before you without using and directing your 12 divine faculties. Now, candlelighting, we're going to talk about all of them. We're going to make an affirmation about all of them. We've had lessons in the past about all of them. But today, because it's the first day of Advent, we begin to focus on faith and centering that faculty of faith on the idea. Chris, would you put our affirmation back up, please? Opening statement. I mean, our affirmation, yeah, it was, it's the equivalent. Our affirmation for the Advent calendar, Advent, yeah, whatever that thing is on the wall. My faith is guided to the truth of my being. You see where you want to direct it. Not out here, not to what your neighbor says or what one of your relatives thinks you ought to do or what the, what the truth is about you. My faith is guided to the truth of my being. Together, my faith is guided to the truth of my being. 
the Christ of God is born in me. That's the truth. I don't know how many Christmases we've been hoping as if at some point without us having to do anything at all, it's just going to one of these days, and I'm going to light up like a Christmas tree. I did that one Christmas under a table. We had a, a, a faulty outlet that the tree had been plugged into, and my, my father had me crawl under this table. He didn't even move the table to replace the plug. I was about, I don't know, 10. He didn't turn the electric off. You can do that. You can change, you know, move the wires over if you're careful. And I bumped one of the wires and one of the other wires and my feet went up in the air. Woo! <laughs> I guess my hair would have too. I lit up like a Christmas tree, sort of. But it's time that we center our faith in the idea that it's not going to be born one of these days. It already is. It's there, and it's time for me to pull aside the curtain and see that child of God that's been there since the beginning of the world. Remember, it's your church, and you're the high priest. It's up to you to do the service, to call forth the divine within yourself. And the faculty of faith is first. Thinking is its job, and think it will. On the right side, or on the left side, oh, it'll go back and forth. That's what Charles meant when he said, draws his thoughts from the unstable sea of sense. Looks here, looks, looks to God, whoops, and then gets distracted over to... We, we, it goes back and forth. Depending upon where we direct it, hear that that we direct the faculty of faith. It doesn't naturally just go to the right side, go to the good. It goes wherever, whatever's got our attention. So it is up to us. You alone can direct where its net will cast, where it's going to look. One of them, those... You know, wise statements Jesus once made when somebody made some complaint about something. I can't remember the details of the story, but his, his, his answer is never to be forgotten. What is that to thee? Follow thou me. It doesn't matter how things look. What is that to you, how, how things look in the world? It's only appearances. Why worry about this or worry about that? Center yourself in the power and presence of God, the power and presence of good in you, in everyone you see. Get yourself centered in that, and all the other takes care of itself. <laughs> 